wandering into the night, wanting a place to hide this weary soul, this bag of bones. I tried with all my choice but to believe my dad's are burning like ashes in the wind oh yeah I sold out to my old friends burning and bitter there so you can just keep it moving ha now you ain't welcome here come on and testify with me and now till I walk the streets of gold you see I'll sing about Was dead. 
him. He thought that I had given up to never dance again. The devil thought he had me. He thought I was dead. He thought that I had given up to never dance again. The devil thought he had me. He thought I was dead. He thought that I had given up to never dance again. excited to be in service today. Look at your neighbor and say, it's so good to see you in the house of the Lord. Amen. Got joy in my soul. God is in control. Got Satan on my trail. Singing all is well. He's attacking every day, but I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. What does it mean? Oh, I can't hear you. This means war. What? This means war. I got joy. I got joy in my soul. Hey, God is in control. Got Satan on my trail. I'm singing all is well. He's attacking every day. I'm watching while I pray. No matter the attack, I won't turn back. This means war. So what do we do? I bleed, I bleed the blood. 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 I bleed the blood, yes. I bleed, I bleed the blood. Over my life. Yes, I bleed, I bleed the blood. Over my family. Oh, I bleed, I bleed the blood. I bleed the blood. Yes, I bleed, I bleed the blood. The battle is over. Don't wait till the victory is won. Just remember whatever God promised. It's yours and it's already done. So don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Don't wait. Shout now. Oh, oh. Shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Shout now. Oh, oh. Shout now. Shout now. In Jesus' name, cause tonight, tonight we got, got a right to shake the foundation Let's take that with one more praise. Time. Glory, hallelujah, this is what we come to do. Tear down strongholds, break the chain. Find the devil in Jesus' name, cause tonight, tonight we got the right to shake the foundation with So let's praise him. Praise Him, praise Him, praise Him, praise Him. Yeah. The Lord is worthy, the Lord is worthy. The Lord is worthy, the Lord is worthy. Tonight, tonight we got the right to shake. 
take the foundation with me. Can you feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Can you feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Can you feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Way down in your soul. Can you feel it? The power of the Holy Ghost. Can you feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Can you feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Way down in your soul. The Holy Ghost comes inside. Makes me want to drop a shell. When the Holy Ghost comes inside. What happens, church? I feel the Lord. Can you feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Can you feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Can you feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Way down in your soul. There's revival in the church right now. 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 There's revival in the church. I said revival. In the church. Revival in the church. Come on, do you like this? Got the Holy Ghost upon me right now. Yes, I do. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my Sister Terry. Don't 
deserve it till you give yourself away for the overwhelming never ending reckless love of God storm surrounding me let it break at your name and still call the sea to still the rage in me to still every way at your name and peace Still, call the sea to still. 
be still. The raging beat is still everywhere. Everywhere. At your name. So we cry, Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. You silence me. Every fear, Jesus, Jesus.
Wednesday night service. Amen. Thank you, praise team. Amen. We'll let them settle down and go. Thank you, sister. Thank you. Amen. God bless you guys. You may be seated. Good evening, Shiny Lights. Welcome to Wednesday night service. Amen. Many of you know me. I am Sister Yvette Arredondo, and I have the privilege and I have the honor of sharing with you what God has given me to share. It was also for me to reflect on my walk as a believer. Amen. So I don't take this lightly. It is an honor and a privilege to stand before you today. Thank you, Pastor Mario and Pastor Arlene, who is watching, for trusting me to feed your flock. So let us pray and usher in the Holy Spirit, amen. Lord, Father God, I come before you today, Father God. Lord, I decrease all of me, Father God, that you may increase, Lord. Let my words, Father God, fall upon good grounds, Father God, that the seeds may be planted, Father God, to your people. Thank you for bringing them here today safely, Father God. Open their hearts, Father God. Open their eyes and their ears to hear a word from you, Lord. We love you and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, many of you know me, I'm Sister Yvette, and, and I was studying and I was praying, I'm going to be looking back and forth, amen. So as I was studying and praying for a word, God instructed me this way, we are a church who speaks the truth and in the word of God, amen. So Sunday, pastor spoke on, I hope your name is written in the Lamb's book of life, amen. We're in the last days, and there's no time to waver back. So tonight, the Lord gave me a title for tonight, and it's, and it's a bit long, amen, but it's necessary. So if you're taking notes... The title reads, what or who is your Delilah that is breaking the covenant that you have with God? Amen? So uh, it was a, a, a mission and a trial to get this message, amen? But this is what God wants me to speak on. So we all know the story in the Bible about Samson and Delilah. And if you don't know tonight, I will share some key points on who Samson was, his temptation, and what his godly purpose and his downfall was. So like Samson, we're all here for a purpose, and that includes you and I, amen? So back in the Old Testament times, God was very strategic in placing whom he needed, why he needed, and when he needed them for his purpose. Samson was born to save the Nazarites. God chose Samson. He was appointed to be, defeat the Philistines, amen? So this message is on the covenant that we made with God. Everything in the Bible is for us to learn and to grow from the mistakes of others. Amen? Thank God for that. So what or who in our lives is the temptation? So when I say Delilah, I'm referring to temptation or that sin that breaks the covenant that we have made with God. So covenant means to have an agreement, a mutual promise between God and us. Let me start my timer. Skipped a few minutes there. So in theology, it means an agreement which brings forth a new relationship of commitment between God and his people. See, a covenant with Christ, you give and he gives, you take and he takes, amen? See, we as believers sitting here tonight all are sealed with an oath, a covenant that we made between God and us. So tonight I will speak on Samson, that covenant with God, and the weakness, the temptation, and Delilah. So if your name is Delilah, I'm sorry, I'm reading out the book of Judges, amen? So Delilah was sent with an assignment and an agenda. She didn't stop till she succeeded at breaking down Samson's purpose. And we will be reading out the Old Testament in the book of Judges, amen? Some may know the story, but during the time of Judges in Israel, the Philistines were often at war with everyone, but they were troubled to Israel. See, in the book of Judges, in the Old Testament, so let us turn to Judges chapter 13, verses 1. Say amen when you have it. I'm going to read out the New King James Version, amen. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines 40, for 40 years. Sorry, let me get my pages. My notes are not working on the laptop. So again, the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord delivered them into the hands of the Philistines for 40 years. 
So disobedience leads us to living in the sin that we choose. Disobedience always has consequences. In Romans 1.18, in the Amplified, it says, the word reads, For God does not overlook sin, and the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men, who in their wickedness suppress and strifle the truth. That's God's wrath. When we are disobedient over and over, God's mercy, he has mercy on us, but we tend to take it for granted. Or we tend to not care and we continue to sin. And we do evil because we know about this thing called God's grace. So we know God's grace, mercy, and love. He gives us joy and peace, and he is here to heal us. He is the God that can calm the sea. He is the God that raises people from the dead, and he is the healer of healers, amen? But he is also a God of wrath, so we are to fear the Lord. So let us go back to Judges chapter 13, verses 2. And I'm going to paraphrase a little bit here. So verse and, uh, verses 2 on, I'm going to paraphrase it. Samson was born. He was chosen with the covenant between him and God to save his people and how sometimes we as believers allow distractions and sin and we get everything that God gives us. He gives us our desires. And once we have our desires, we stop looking to God. We set our eyes on other things. We think we can do things on our own without God. We push them to the side, and it breaks that covenant that we have made with God. But God never leaves us, and he never breaks the covenant with us. It is us who breaks that covenant. So to remove your Delilah means whatever weakness, that thing that entices you or excites you to go against the plan of God, we are to stay the course and be in God's will. We are here for a greater purpose. Amen? Amen. So I'm going to slow it down a little bit. We are here, we are all here to be in alignment with the assignment that God has given you. What or who is your Delilah? Only we can examine ourselves. It's a self-reflection between you and God. Think about this for a moment. In our life, we sometimes put work above God. We sometimes put children and grandchildren above God. That's your Delilah. Sometimes we put kids and baseball and football and fishing and school above God. That's your Delilah. Those are the excuses we tend to use. We put God to the side. Any one of those things can be our Delilah in excess. And it breaks the covenant that we have made with God. See, that means we put God on the back burner for the other things that we desire. We forget the promises we have made that then hinders us and it stops us from praying. It stops, stops us from reading. It stops us from going to church, fellowshipping and serving. And that happens gradually over time. So once we do it again and again, we say, I can't come to church anymore. I need to babysit. I can't come to church anymore. I'm tired. I can't come to church anymore. There is an event I have to go to. That means we put God on the back burner. That is our Delilah, making excuses. And we only call upon God when we need him, and that breaks the covenant. See, God never leaves us nor forsakes us, but he is a jealous God. We are not to put other gods before him. See, temptation is the lust of the flesh. What's your Delilah? Could be men. It could be women. It could be lust. It could be greed. It could be pride. It could be anger. Temptation is a thought that turns to an action. If you're sinning over and over, you truly haven't converted over to Christ. There has to be a true repentance. And then a conversion happens in your life. See, Samson was born with a purpose. God has called each and every one of us for his purpose. Amen? Amen? See, there is a quote by Rick Warren, and it says, God's purpose is greater than our problems. God's purpose is greater than our pain. And God's purpose is greater than our sin. Samson was a warrior called by God, mighty, 
and favored and strong with the Holy Spirit. See, in Judges chapter 14, verse 19, the words written on the verse, it starts with, Then the Spirit of the Lord came upon him mightily. Samson was a Nazarite warrior and a judge and an executor. He was a member of the tribe of Dan, and Samson was strong physically with the supernatural strength. He tore a lion apart with his bare hands. He killed thousands and defeated the Philistines' army with the jawbone of a donkey. So that is superhuman strength. So God chose him and gave him strength so he can save God's people. See, we are all born with a purpose. Your purpose is not my purpose. We are uniquely designed. We are linked together to edify and uplift the body of Christ. See, Samson knew, God knew Samson before he was born, just like you and I. In the scripture, Jeremiah 1.5 says, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you, and I ordained you the prophet of the nations. So Samson was spoiled. He received everything he asked for, even though it was not from God. See, his downfall and his temptation, the sin he placed above God, he loved beautiful Philistine women, and he was involved with three women. The first one was a Philistine woman that he married. You see, that was the start of a sin. He was born with a purpose, with the covenant, to save his people from the Philistines, but he broke that covenant for selfish desires and married a Philistine. Two, Samson was with the harlot from Gaza. He had self-gratification. He was the strongest man, so he got what he wanted. The third woman was Delilah, but she was different. Samson fell in love, but Delilah had an agenda to deliver Samson into the hands of the Philistines. The devil knew Samson's weakness was women, and the devil knows our weakness. See, the devil used Delilah. The Philistine leaders had a plan to find out what made Samson so strong, and they bribed Delilah with money. As Samson was in love, she would ask Samson over and over to please tell me what makes you so strong. See, the devil plots and he schemes to try to overtake your life. Don't fall for the trap. Be vigilant, alert, and aware of the devil's schemes. See, Delilah would nag over and over, day after day, until Samson couldn't take it any longer. So he told her, if my hair is shaved off, I will lose my strength. See, the devil don't play fair. He's going to nag and nag, and he's going to put your desires in front of you. And as he put those desires in front of you, he's there to kill you, to destroy your life. See, we have to remove, he tries to remove you from your calling. So don't allow the devil to take you out. See, Delilah knew his weakness. And tells the Philistines the secrets. Samson's strength was in his hair. And while he was sleeping, they shaved his hair off and his strength was gone. So the Philistines tied him up and plucked out his eyes and they took him to Gaza. And he was captured and imprisoned, no longer the strongest man. See, God turned away from Samson for his disobedience. And as the years went by, being captive and his hair grew long again, you see, God never leaves us nor forsakes us. Samson was brought out so the Philistines could make fun of him. And they taunt him and they teased him while he was captive. See, the devil wants to trap us and keep us in prison with your sin. Oh, but God is greater, amen? See, God is greater for you and me. He saved us and he said, Samson prayed and he called upon the Lord when he thought he was dying of thirst. Samson called out to God, desperate for God's mercy yet again. So in Judges 16.28 in the Amplified, Samson called out to the Lord and said, Oh Lord, God, please remember me. Please strengthen me just one more time. Let me take this vengeance on the Philistines for my two eyes. In verse 30, Samson said, Let me die with the Philistines. And he pushed with all his might, 
and the temple fell, and the Lord's, and all the people who were in it. So the dead that he killed, his death, were more than he had killed in his lifetime. But God is saying tonight that we must be obedient to the plan and the purpose of God's will in our lives. We must remember the covenant that we have made with God. You see, there's one time, true life story of mine, that uh, I was drunk, and I was at a bar, and I was driving home. And I had an open bottle of container in my car. And all I see is the cops turn around and pull me over. And you know, when you're in those situations, you ask God, please, Lord, please, Lord, get me out of this one. Please, Lord. And that was me. And, I, and as you know Christ, you say, God, I promise, I promise. That is the covenant that we make with God. So as we make those covenants, that's a promise between you and God. We are to fulfill those promises, amen? But anyway, I didn't get arrested. The Lord made way, amen? Thank the Lord for that. But always remember the covenants that you make with him, amen? See, as we turn away, but it is for us to learn the lessons. You see, he, Jesus Christ, God, never left Samson, even though they mocked him and they beat him. And Samson lost his eyesight. They tied him up and made fun of him, and they mocked him. They said, where is your God now? And how defeated Samson must have felt. How ashamed Samson must have felt. How low he must have felt. Can you imagine like he let down God? He was choosing sin. He let down his people for allowing temptation to overcome him. But God is saying tonight that we must be obedient to the plan and the purpose of God's will in our lives. Amen. We must remember the covenant that we had made with him for his promises. Sometimes God, out of love, turns away from us. But it's for us to learn a lesson. You see, he never left Samson. Amen. Thank God for that. Samson really must have felt ashamed. So no temptation is worth losing your salvation for. So don't allow that one more time, that one Delilah, that temptation, that sin to take you out, to take out your family, to take out your children, to take out your grandchildren. Don't allow that to happen. You see, the devil is trying to take your legacy, your character, and your morals. Don't allow the devil to scheme and use that sin you're holding on to because it's time to let it go. Amen? You see, the devil used Delilah. And it, ta and it will taunt you. That Delilah in our life will taunt us. It will make us feel like a failure. But God is here to set you free. He has never left you, and he is waiting for you to let that Delilah go. Amen. So tonight I will ask you, you know, to bow your heads and to close your eyes. If you would like to come to the altar, amen. Um, Pastor Stephen, if you can play the song. If you could just meditate on this song. It's called, For He is the Covenant-Keeping God. So tonight we thank God for the covenants that we have with him. Amen. Let us remember the promises. Let us remember the times that we said, I will serve you, God, with all I have. Let us remember the times that we said, God, get me out of this one. I will serve you with all I have, Lord. I will do what you want me to do. See, we are to thank God for those covenants that he has given, because he never goes back on his promises, for he is the promise keeper. See, there are things that happen in our lives. There's, they are blessings in disguise. They push us towards the calling. Be like Samson, little man. And don't allow Delilah or temptation 
are things that happen in our lives, but they're blessings in disguise, amen? And I want to share a little bit. It's about Samson and Delilah. So do not let that Delilah in your life stop you from going forward, amen? Don't allow the little temptations because God is greater. God would show you the way, amen? Just seek him, knock, and he'll show you the way. Just want to say thank you, guys. I love you. Thank you, Pastor Mario. It's a blessing, and it's an honor to be here, amen? I had 50 pages. Come on, let's thank the Lord for Sister Yvette. Good job, good job. It's not easy to get back here. Believe me, it's not easy to get back here all week long. You got the devil fighting you. You go through stuff. So everybody that gets back here, believe me, keep them in prayer. Amen. Thank you, sis. Good job, good job, good job, good job. What a title, huh? What a title. What is, look at this. Just look up here from, what is your Delilah? Your Delilah could, to some people, could be pride, arrogance, money, materialism, <laughs> arrogance, uh, number one. What is your Delilah? If, if you don't overcome it, it might over, overcome you. Say it again. If you don't overcome it, if you do not overcome it, sooner or later, it might overcome you. If you don't kill that giant sooner or later, a giant might kill you. The Bible says, there has no temptation taken to you, but such is common to man. Everybody gets tempted. Everybody in this room. Matter of fact, temptation is not a sin. It's a sin when we yield into temptation, okay? It's a sin when we fall into temptation. But temptation alone is not a sin. A temptation is not a sin, but playing with temptation invites sin. Say it again. It's not a sin, but flirting with it. The, a man kept flirting and flirting, and sooner, whoop, sooner later he got caught because he kept playing and playing with it. Play. So don't play. Tell your neighbor, don't play with temptation. Come on. Come on, tell him again. Don't play with it. Just run away. Get out. It's not a sin, but it's an invitation. It's opening the door. That's why the Bible says close the door. Close the door to all sin. Um, temptation is not a sin. It is a call for battle. It's a call for battle. Uh, temptation is saying, the reason I, I got these notes, I just finished giving a class on temptation. Come on. That's why I'm pulling out these notes here. This is for free. Temptation is Satan's weapon to defeat you, but it can, it can become God's tool to build you. Come on, somebody. Come on. So whatever, whatever your Delilah is, God will make a way of escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, there has no temptation taken to you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but with the temptation make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. James 1 tells, Bless, blessed is a man that endureth temptation, for when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to them that love him. Let no man say when he is tempted. Listen, we can't blame the devil all the time. Three of you. The devil made me do it. The devil made me. No, a lot of time it's our flesh. Our flesh, gets, that's what the Bible says. It says, let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempts he any man. But every man is tempted when he is drawn away from his own lust and enticed. The Bible says, watch and pray. Watch and pray that you enter not into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Matter of fact, Jesus was tempted. Bible says that the enemy led him to the wilderness to be tempted. So if Jesus was tempted, so will you. Amen. So you can make it. Come on, somebody. Come on. You can make it. You can. Again. Again. I don't know what your Delilah is. But if you don't overcome it. Hello. Uh, later down the line, a year from now, two years from now, six months from now. If you're not careful, whoop, it's going to get you because you didn't overcome it. Now, how many know that God will give you all the power to overcome whatever you might be going through? I don't care what it is. According to Scripture, 
Matter of fact, the Bible says that he'll uh, lead you out of temptation. Um, the, the Bible says here that uh, when they're tempted, that uh, he'll lead the godly out of temptation. One more thing about temptation, and marvel not, for Satan himself come, he transfers himself as an angel of light. Okay? He don't come with pitchfork and a, a, a horns and a tail. He comes. He comes in a three-piece suit. He'll come in a mini skirt. Come on, he'll come. He'll come with money, offering you money. So we got to watch and pray. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. And most of the time, the Holy Spirit in you will tell you, watch it. Be careful. Come on, somebody. Watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord for his sister, Yvette. <laughs> good word, sis. Good word, good word. Amen. We got a busy weekend. I heard we got a busy, 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 busy weekend <clears throat> this Friday. Young people, Pastor Steve, this Friday, y'all meeting here? All right, youth night. All right, meeting here. I heard you guys got a ping pong table. A basket. Huh? What do you see? At whose house? I'm going to start putting a basket right in front of my yard. All the young people come in. So it's in my house. Thank you for reminding me. Amen. So young people be in my house. Where do I live? Get with Pastor Stephen where I live, okay? Off of Harvest Smooth. That's all I'm going to tell you. It's at my house. I got a pretty big backyard, right, Pastor? But if I got a court in my backyard. I don't have a ping pong table, though, so, hey, man, I got a basketball court, so you are welcome at my, what are you guys going to eat at my house? That's a good one? That's a good one. You'll find out Friday, because I'm going to go to the backyard and sneak me whatever you guys have. Matter of fact, today's Wednesday, last Wednesday at 2 o'clock, a Mario the Third was born. Come on, help me celebrate. Mario the Third. I'm only kidding when I say Mario the Third. okay? His name's not Mario. His name is... Uh, that's what I was going to say, Andrew. Keep on forgetting his name. Every time I would pray, I says, what's his name? What's his name? Coco's boy, Coco's boy. Andrew what? Andrew Villa. Hallelujah. So thank you. He's seven years old. He's at my house. Uh, usually uh, seven, seven, day, seven days old. Usually Arlene will spend uh, 30 days, 60 with our, uh, our little one. So he's at one, uh, 2 o'clock in the morning. The, the most beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> As, as music to my ears, just to hear, let him cry. Let him cry. Let his lungs come. So thank you for your prayers. He's seven days old. What else is going on, young man? We got a busy weekend. My goodness. Amen. Come on, gentlemen. Come on. Angel Menchaca will be with us at the Valley, Bar, Valley Boulevard building. Why? Thank you for asking. They're having something here for three days. So, uh, so this Saturday is going to be taken here. Uh, so we'll be at the Valley Boulevard building. Uh, $10, $10 per year burrito. Matter of fact, you're paying for your own burrito, okay? So see Al Aranda, Rudy, for your uh, burrito. So that's at 9 o'clock at the Valley Boulevard building. And wow, an hour later, the sisters are going to be at Mary Callender's. Is that right? Amen. She can preach, I'm telling you. She can preach. Y'all going to uh, $25 see Terry Aranda uh, for she, she, you guys are going to have a good time. Man, we should come back here Sunday morning fired up. Come on, somebody. After this, Yvette, Yvette kicked it off. Actually, Terry Aranda, we kicked it off Friday, Monday for prayer, huh? The prayer wars, we kicked it off Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and Saturday by, by Sunday morning. Now, the... The reason I got Pastor Damaris is because I was over there a few months ago. Pastor said she was going to be in town. I'm going to be at a, uh, uh, I'm going to be in town. I said, sis, beans that you're coming, why don't you just preach Sunday morning? So it's three months ago, I was talking to the family. Hey, I'm going to be around the area. I'm going to be at a conference. And I said, beans that you here, preach Sunday morning. So she's a, she's a powerful preacher as well this come Monday. So that's services back to back to back. Water baptism if you want to get baptized, okay? I promise you I'll pick you out of the water, okay? All you, all, all you that just took the foundations classes, what a beautiful time to go ahead and get baptized. You just took class after class after class. Oh, what a beautiful time just to finish it up with water uh, baptism. Uh, sign up with uh, Wayne and Deborah in the back alley on Sunday morning. Amen. Is that all the announcements, young man? No more, no more, no more. more. Look, at, look at the flyer here. Look at the flyer. I had to read it twice. It's power her full. Power her full. You got to read it a few times. Help me. Huh? Look at that. Power hurtful. Something like that, right? Break it down. <laughs> that's, what I was, that's what I was trying to say. Powerful. Powerful her. Okay? It's going to be powerful. My goodness. It's going to be great. My goodness. All powerful speakers. So it's uh, 
uh, before the before the COVID hit, literally, they were up to 160 women. It was it was jam packed, and the men were jam packed. So if we did it years ago, we can do it again. Come on, somebody, we can do it again. So sign up, uh, sign up as well. It's gonna be a great great time in the Lord. Hallelujah, amen. Tithes and offerings. Come on, somebody. Raise up your hand by faith. How many tithe? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, because you're not robbing me. You're robbing God. Actually, if you're not tithing, you're hurting yourself. Okay? You're hurting yourself. Tithe. The Bible tells us to tithe. Every, if, uh, restaurants are asking for 20%, 30%, but uh, God remains the same as just for 10%. That means whatever you, got, whatever you make, whatever you get paid, 10% goes to God automatically and offering. Father, thank you tonight. Thank you for our, your word. Your word is so rich, so encouraging. What is our Delilah, Father? And everybody can answer that privately. This is my Delilah. This is my Delilah. And, Father, thank you that you give us the strength to overcome our Delilah, whatever it might be, uh, money, uh, pride, lust, Father, envy, jealousy, God, whatever it may be. You have all the power through your word to overcome it, Father. Thank you that tonight we are more than conquerors. We are overcomers, Father. Father, this bless, give us a blessed, blessed, blessed weekend starting Friday night with Pastor Stephen, Father, with the young people. A Saturday morning, the men, the women, is back Sunday morning as well, Father. One blessed, blessed time. I feel like we're just going to, we're in a feast, God. We're just going to receive your word, draw from your word, Father. Thank you for your people that came out tonight. Travel in mercy as we go home. Let us sleep like babies, God, because we've cast all of our words upon you. And we're going to pray before we go to bed. Uh, Father, tonight we pick up our tithes and offerings on the way out, Father, some uh, brought it, and some will give to Zell and our, our internet, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. And everybody said, that was a week, man. Come on, everybody said. How many are going to overcome your Delilah? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. You know what it is. Okay, overcome that thing. Because if not, it might overcome. Como dicen en Tijuana, Jew. Come on, somebody. Praise the Lord, everybody. I'll see you this weekend. Thank you for coming out. We'll see you soon in Jesus' name.